Hi everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm Anne from the Sussex Handmade Soap Company and today we are going to be testing a range of new Christmas fragrances and mica colours in cold process soap to see how they behave and if they're going to be suitable for use in our Christmas soaps. And you may wonder why we are discussing Christmas in May. On the face of it, it does seem just a little bit early perhaps. However, we sell a lot of soap wholesale to shops and those shops often start uh, getting ready for Christmas really early on. And we know that some of the shops that we stock are actually getting ready for Christmas and selecting what they're going to be purchasing kind of in June, July time. So we want to make sure that we are ready so that they can include our soaps in their Christmas purchasing. That is why we are getting ready now in May. Uh, we are testing, I say, a lot of new fragrances and some new colours as well. And the reason we are testing them is that fragrance oils can behave very differently in soaps. You can get some fragrance oils that are perfect, they don't accelerate trace and they don't discolour. And then at the other end of the scale, you can get fragrance oils that will turn your soap really dark brown or they will seize up on you and you won't be able to pour them or do intricate designs. So before we use new fragrance oils in big batches of soap, we just like to test them out in a small amount just to see if they're going to work. And it is a similar thing with the colours as well. We want to test the colours just to make sure that they are going to stay kind of true to the colour that they appear to be and that they don't morph or change into a completely different colour that doesn't work in our design. So today we are just going to show you how we do that. So let's get on and test out some Christmas fragrances. So here is everything that we want to test today. And we are sticking with our bog standard top down view today. If you've seen some of our more recent videos, you will see that we have been experimenting with different angles, but because this is going to be something we need to work quite quickly with, we're just sticking with a very simple top down view. Here we've got all the fragrances that we want to test and these are all new to me. We haven't used any of these in our soaps before so I'm really looking forward to seeing how they behave. And the reason for testing the fragrances before we just kind of chuck them into the soap is we want to check if the fragrance accelerates, if it rises, if it thickens the batter too much, if it seizes, and also we want to see if it discolours the final bars as well. And that is why we are conducting this testing. With the micas, we have got all the colours here that we want to test. These are all from Resonate, and we are testing these micas, again, just to assess the kind of colour result that they give, because some micas do change a little bit in cold process soap. So while they may look ideal for what we want now, they may change and they may not be so ideal when they are in finished cured soap. So we are conducting some testing so that we can then create our Christmassy bars with the confidence that they are going to look and behave how we want them to look and behave. And I'm going to be testing the fragrance oils, all bar one, at a level of 3%. We will be testing the Nutcracker, which I believe is this one, at 2%. And the reason for that is that the Nutcracker has a lower usage rate on the IFRA documents. You can actually only use the Nutcracker at 1.66% in a finished product. As I say, we are testing it at 2%. Uh, and the reason for that is I want to test all of these fragrance oils at a slightly higher usage rate than we will be using in our finished products because then if the oils behave well at a higher level I can be pretty confident that they are going to behave well when used at a lower level in our finished products. So the ones we are testing at 3% will actually be used at 2% in our finished products and the Nutcracker we are testing at 2 and we will be using it around about 1.5% if it works in our finished products. So the way I am going to conduct our testing is we have made up a batch of just plain, uncoloured, cold process soap and I'm going to split it down into 100 gram portions into these little plastic cups and then to each 100 gram portion of soap I'm going to add 3% fragrance oil, so that'll be 3 grams of fragrance oil. I'm going to stir it, I'm going to check on it, keep an eye on it and see how it behaves. With the micas we're going to do exactly the same, we are going to pour out 100 gram portions of soap, we're going to add in the mica, whiz it up 
and see how it looks, pour it out into bars and then check on those bars over the cure time and see how the colour holds up, how the fragrances hold up and whether we are going to pass or fail the soap. I have made up a little sheet where I am recording you know what the fragrances are, uh, I've put a little key so I can make a quick note if they rice or seize or if there's anything that's kind of not ideal I can make a little note so I've got detailed notes here and I can just pop in anything that I need to as I'm testing the oils and the micas just to remind myself how it's behaving later on. So I think I've kind of covered that hopefully so let's get on and test some soap fragrances and micas. And here's a quick little tip for you as well. We are using plastic pipettes today, which are notoriously a massive pain for rinsing out after use. The fragrance does tend to stick to them. So you can just take your fragrance oil bottle and if you take an elastic band, you can kind of just attach the pipette to the fragrance oil bottle and then it doesn't matter if it hasn't been rinsed out so thoroughly because you have got the Christmas tree scent, the Christmas tree pipette and there's no risk of smells getting transferred from one thing to another and it works really nicely and it's good for storing like that too. Have it up this way not the other way otherwise things will leak out of it. So all the soap is weighed out now and I'm going to take individual portions at a time, pop them onto the scales and then I'm going to add my 3% fragrance oil which is 3 grams just into each pot. Once the fragrance oil is measured in I'm going to take my little stick and I'm just going to mix it in using the stick and then I'm going to pop it to one side while I move on to the others and just kind of leave it for a few minutes just to see what it does and how it behaves. So that is a Christmas tree scent in that one there. The next one we are moving on to is cranberry and the reason I've already taken all the lids off my fragrance oils is because they can sometimes be a bit of a pain to take off and because I want to be working quite quickly today I don't want the, uh, the, the inconvenience of having to take the lids off. I've been caught out like that before where it took me ages to get lids off and everything went a bit wrong so now the lids are off and we are good to go. And just mixing in cranberry now and placing it down. The next one is mulled wine and this one smells absolutely lovely. I really hope it works for soap because I would love to be able to include this in our Christmas scents. It is very fruity and it does smell that little bit kind of spicy, Christmassy, lovely scent to it. The next one coming up is the Nutcracker, which if you remember I was saying we're going to test at a lower level. So this next one I'm only going to be putting 2 grams in, which equates to 2% total. I've got a feeling that this one may discolour to a kind of brown colour because it smells like it's got vanilla in it. And vanilla does often discolour. I'm hoping I'm wrong because it is much easier to work with fragrance oils that don't discolour but I have a feeling that we might end up with some discoloration on this one and immediately you can see it is going kind of an orangey colour already and I'm going to zip through the last four now because I don't think you guys particularly want to watch me adding them all in so we'll skip to the end of uh, adding the fragrances and then we shall run through them and see how they're behaving so all the fragrances are in now and I'm just going to keep an eye on them, check the time. We have been going about two minutes so far. This is the Christmas tree, so it's thickening a little but it seems to be behaving. That is a nice kind of consistency. Compare that to the one we did second, which was the cranberry, and you can see that, that is going gloopy and thick and it is a shame because it smells delicious, but that is going to be really hard to use in soaps. It has been two minutes and it is thickening up to a consistency that wouldn't be able to be poured at all. So that is potentially not one that we would use in our soaps. The mulled wine, however, the one I want it to be nice and work well, again is behaving well, nice and workable still. The nutcracker, again another one that has got 
a nice consistency to it. So at the minute, they are all behaving pretty well, with the exception of cranberry. We are noticing some slight kind of colour changes already. Some of them are going slightly yellow. Some of them have got a sort of brownish tint to them. There is nothing at the minute that we couldn't work off, but that work with. But those are colour changes that may well happen during the cure and won't be immediately noticeable anyway. But very happy with the consistency of all bar one of these. And I'm just going to leave them for a few more minutes in these pots just to see if they stay nice and thin or if any of the others do start to thicken up a bit. And then I'm going to pour them into individual um, cavity moulds so that we can kind of put them to one side and then turn them out tomorrow and then keep an eye on them over the coming weeks for any colour changes. So we're now almost at the 10 minute mark. I've already taken the cranberry out and I have decanted it into the mould because there was no sense in leaving it any longer because it was blatantly thickening beyond pour level so I've just kind of plapped that one into the mould. The others I'm going to pour out now and just to kind of let you guys know, I have categorised these on my sheet from one to eight. So Christmas tree is number one, this one here is number eight, and I'm going to pour them in. So number one goes here next to the pink brambleberry logo, then it logo, then it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is how I am keeping track of what scent is where. So Christmas tree still at the 10 minute mark nice and workable and 10 minutes for the designs we do is going to be plenty of time for colouring and designing so I'm happy with that. I'm going to pour it into the cavity and I'm going to hope that it doesn't discolour or change because if it doesn't discolour or change colour then uh, it's going to be a pass for Christmas tree. Number three is mould wine and again still a lovely workable consistency pouring into cavity position number three and now we come to the nutcracker which again is a nice workable consistency but my prediction does seem to have some kind of uh, truth in it now because that is a lot darker in colour than the others that we have done so far. It has got a brown tint to it and I am concerned that over the cure time that will darken even further. Um, so it's going to make designing a little bit trickier when it comes to colours. This one here is called Fireside and again a lovely consistency and doesn't seem to have changed colour yet. This one here is White Christmas. This has thickened ever so slightly, but it's not going to be a problem for the designs that we are doing. It also seems to be taking on kind of a yellowish discoloration, so it'll be interesting to see how that behaves over the coming weeks in terms of whether it fades to a much more yellow colour or if it kind of sticks with this kind of yellowish tint that it's taken on. Two to go now. This one here is called Mistletoe Kisses. And again, no real discoloration as yet that I can note, and a nice consistency. So we'll go into the mould with this one now as well. And the last one we have here is Frankincense and Myrrh, which smells very, very nice. One of my favourites, although I do like the majority of the Christmas scents, but this one is absolutely gorgeous. And we've got a nice thin consistency still, and no real discoloration yet, which is always a nice positive kind of thing to see. Yeah, this one is pouring really, really well. I would say, if anything, this one actually kind of slows down the thickening and the trace a little. Perfect. So that is all the Christmas scents tested. Um, with the exception of the cranberry, they've all poured fairly well. It is just going to be a case of waiting on discoloration and seeing what happens with them. So we shall come back um, probably tomorrow and show you how they are looking and we will give you an update. But now let's move on to the colours. 
So I'm testing the micas at 0.5%, which actually, as a usage rate, is quite high for us, but I just want to see the kind of depth of colour I can get. I've weighed out 0.5 grams of each mica into a little pot, and I have added just a little bit of olive oil just to kind of disperse it. Then I have weighed out 100 gram pots of soap batter, which has been just brought to emulsion. And all I'm going to do is tip each mica one at a time into the batter and then I'm going to use a stick blender just to kind of bring it to a medium trace and then we're going to pour them into the mould. This colour here is called Emerald Lagoon and all of the micas that we are using today are from Resonate which is a UK company and it's the company that we do use for our micas and eco glitters and things like that. So colour number one all nicely mixed in now and going into position one in my mould. Colour number two is chestnut brown going into the batter now. This is what I'm hoping to use kind of on my Christmas trees to create the tree trunk. So I'm not going to be using huge amounts of this colour um, but I wanted to test it just because I'm quite picky about making sure the colours that I use are exactly what I want. So let's mix this one in now. So chestnut brown going into position number two. Colour number three is Starry Night, which we are intending on using in some soaps that we are doing with a kind of evening wintry theme to them. And we thought a nice deep blue would be fantastic. So we've got a very nice deep blue coming out from the starry night. If we wanted it to be a little bit lighter, I would just lower the usage rate from 0.5%, so perhaps down to something like 0.2%. And hopefully that would give me a slightly paler shade of the same colour. This one here is called Green Goddess, and I've got high hopes for this one here to be the actual colour that we use for our Christmas tree, which we are going to be putting in the middle of our soap. We did an all natural Christmas tree soap last year. This year we're kind of doing another take on it, but with fragrance oils and micas instead, just because it's slightly easier than using all the various different natural colours. Uh, and because we want to make more of them this year, we need to find a way of being able to do that quicker. So there is the Green Goddess, fairly similar to Emerald Lagoon, but more of a yellowy green, whereas Emerald Lagoon has got the more kind of bluish tint to it. This one here is Sea Smoke, which is a very pale kind of silvery blue colour. Um, I would like to use this one in a soap that I'm creating with a polar bear. We are trying to do a soap with a polar bear on a snowy background. Um, in an ideal world, my snowy background would just be white, but because the polar bear is white, if I put him on a white background, you're not going to be able to see him. So I need a colour that is not white, but that looks like snow, and I'm hoping sea smoke is going to fulfil that criteria. So there we go, a kind of silvery grey, hopefully will pass as a snow colour. If it doesn't, I have got some other colours that I am testing as well, just to see how they will work as snow. So if this one doesn't work out, I'm sure I will find one that does work. And one of those potential choices is Almost Ice which is a kind of iced blue colour. I think if I use this in a low percentage, so below the 0.5 that I'm testing at today, I reckon at 0.1 or 0.2, that may work for my snow if the sea smoke option doesn't. So when used at 0.5%, this does give a very kind of icy blue colour. And I think if I use that at 0.1, that could pass as kind of shimmering snow. I hope. Now we have Tropical Temptations, one of the few micas that I have actually used before, but I'm including it in my testing just to see 
how it looks at the 0 0.5 ratio. It is another potential option for the sky in our kind of nighttime wintry soaps. So if the starry night is too dark or if I just don't like how it looks, Tropical Temptations is another one that we are going to consider for our skies. So this is kind of a nice deep blue colour, slightly brighter than the starry night. It may even be that to get the perfect sky, we could do a 50-50 blend of the Starry Night and the Tropical Temptations together just to see if that gets us kind of nice kind of midnight blue sky. Now we are going with Hollywood Gaze. I've got two ideas for this one. One is it is another potential option for our snow and two is it is a potential option for our daytime sky. We are doing a snowman soap and he will probably be outside in the daytime so I want our sky to be a little of a paler blue than the uh, starry night or the tropical temptation so I'm hoping this might give us a wintry daytime sky colour. So quite a nice pale blue produced by this colour. Um, I think that could work as our daytime sky. What I might do is actually reduce it from 0.5% to say 0.3 just to make it a little more pale and slightly less blue. But that is definitely a colour that I reckon can be worked with for sure. So the last colour I am testing today is actually a combination 50-50 of Green Goddess and Emerald Lagoon. And I'm testing this again for potential use as our Christmas tree colour. I just thought that mixing the two colours might give a really nice Christmas tree colour because we have got the green goddess just here that is a nice bright lime green and we've got the emerald lagoon that is more of a bluey silvery green and I think if you combine those two you might end up with a really kind of silvery green bright Christmas tree colour. That is the plan that we are hoping for. And that is the colour. To be honest I'm not so sure about it at the moment. Hopefully once the soaps have kind of cured um, and saponified overnight and then yeah cured over the next four weeks the colour will kind of come out and we'll get the final idea of what are going to be the colours that are going to be best for us to use. At the moment, to be honest, for the Christmas tree, I think this one is actually still winning. But that could work. We'll just have to wait and see how it turns out. So that is all the colours we are testing today. We shall come back tomorrow. We will turn out the colours and we will also turn out the fragrance oils that we have tested as well, just to show you how everything is looking and give our ideas and thoughts on uh, the colour scheme and the smells and the fragrances. See you tomorrow. So after 24 hours, I have got all the soaps that I have tested. And the first thing I'm going to do is unmold them one by one. I'm going to start with the soap in position number one on my fragrances, which is the Christmas tree scent. And they're unmolding really easily. And I'm just going to pop it out. And then what I'm going to do is get rid of this mold briefly. I'm taking this kind of uh, cocktail stick with the sharp point and I'm actually going to use this while the soap is still soft to write the scent name into the soap. So I'm going to write Christmas tree or just Xmas tree because it is shorter even though I don't especially like the abbreviation of Christmas to Xmas. Less writing required. And I'm also going to write three percent so I know what level it was tested at and then I've got the scent name written into the sample there so I will know what this scent was. I'm going to run through the others now getting them out and writing the scent names into the soap. So now all the soap samples have been unmolded and marked with what the scent is or what the colour is and what the percentage usage rate is. And I can now put them to one side to cure for four weeks and I can just kind of keep checking on them to see if they are discolouring or changing at all. And with the fragrance oil soaps, I imagine we may well get some discoloration. You can already see some of them have discoloured slightly. We've got the Nutcracker here, 
which is taking on kind of a pale yellow tint. And that may well deepen and darken over the coming weeks. And then we've got the Fireside, which is taking on more of a kind of beige, pale brown sort of tone. If they stay at this kind of level, there will be no problem with me using these in our soaps. I'm happy that it's just slight discoloration and it's something that can definitely be worked with. But if they were to get a lot darker, then I would have to reconsider designs. This one here is our cranberry one, the one that's kind of really accelerated and thickened on us. And as you can see, it's not looking great in the uh, finished product either. So cranberry is one that I will probably discount from our Christmas range, or I will use it in a very, very quick, simple design with no swirls and nothing that's gonna take any kind of time to create. When it comes to the mica colour samples, I'm just going to keep an eye on them again. I say after four weeks, I imagine they will kind of be at the colour they are going to stay at. So we might get some kind of changes or they may well stay as they are. Once everything is kind of cured and it's at its final colour and I can be confident it's not going to change anymore, I can then put these samples away safely and I can use them to actually form my colour palette for my Christmas soaps. So for example, in my Christmas tree soap, I'm looking at this palette now as it is and I'm going, well, we would want the brown for the trunk of the tree. And then I'm thinking that I quite like the green goddess as perhaps the body of the tree. And for the sky, perhaps something like Hollywood Gaze. So I'd perhaps put those three colours together and then see if I like them together and just kind of test the colour ideas that I have by holding them next to each other. And that is how I'm going to create our Christmas soaps using the scents that I've tested here, some of the colours that I've tested here. There will be more colours that I test over the coming weeks, but for now we're just going with kind of the Christmassy, outdoorsy, uh, nature inspired Christmas designs um, and that is about it I think. So thank you for watching today's video I hope it has been interesting to you I know it hasn't been the most exciting of all our videos we haven't been making beautiful soaps or crazy creations today um, but the testing of the fragrances and the colours is kind of an unseen part of soap making that really is kind of crucial to getting your design just right. Testing the fragrances and the colours can often be the difference between having a design that works really well and looks amazing and just getting a soap that looks a little bit mediocre or perhaps doesn't even work at all. So the uh, planning and the preparation with things like fragrance oils and colours really are an important part of soap making which is why I thought I would share it with you today. If you do enjoy our channel and our content please do hit that subscribe button and do leave us a comment and a like if you want to. We shall be back on Friday and until then enjoy the rest of your week. See you then, bye!